It is on. Okay. If you're here and you would like to sign in for Peg, that would be good. He's going to send around a note asking you to sign in. Print in. Um, I'd like to have a motion to approve the minutes that uh, Deb sent out. I'll move. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Mayor Cadger, anything beyond the agenda items? Uh, nothing additional. Okay, public speak. Anybody here besides what's on the agenda items? Okay, I'm going to move to the largest item because I promised our planner that I would do that first at 192500 It is the one that received the most scrutiny from our at our meeting. And since I'm the chair of the CPA, I will introduce it. Jamie is here and Jess is here to answer questions and to correct me, which I'm sure might be needed. Um, this was a request from the Housing Authority, Housing Partnership, and we have don't, Kathy. Yes. Kathy Kroll here mm -hmm. from the Housing Partnership and Jessica Allen, who from the planner's point of view administers these kinds of things. Um, as you can see by the request, there were two areas which they hoped to use the funding for. <clears throat> One is <clears throat> um, for first time home buyer, and the second one is housing rehabilitation. First time home buyer involves a vendor um, who will, we will submit, the planning department, I guess, it submits a CPA, or I'm sorry, an RFP for the vendor to. For to be housing. to be the administrator for the home buyer counseling, first time home buyer, yeah. yeah, first time home buyer counseling administration, etc., and that person administers, but the planning department oversees it. As a, yes, as they, they would be a subcontractor. The housing rehabilitation program will be co contracted to the Pioneer Valley Planning Commission. Correct. They're the uh, administrators of that particular program. Um, but we oversee them as a, as That's a subcontractor. Right. In other words, these are loan programs, or both of these programs have a considerable amount of taxpayer money involved, and our planner and our finance director are overseeing in a certain way to make sure that they are done properly. Some of the details I'm going to let um, Jessica go into on the housing rehab program. Um, there is a budget listed on the back page. It's basically they, if I'm right, they can borrow money up to a certain, why don't you? Okay, so really the focus of this is um, <coughs> housing rehabilitation projects outside the community development block grant target area. And I think both of you came to the last mm -hmm. public hearing for CDBG, so if you remember there was a map and there's a very specific area where the monies can be spent using CDBG funds. Um, that's really targeted to where our low-mod income individuals live in the city. But there's still considerable need outside that target area for housing rehabilitation. And we have a wait list of about 50 people for housing rehab. And there's several um, folks on that wait list are, that live outside the target area. So this money is to be used for those out of the target area housing rehab projects. Um, and so the, the funding is um, to do about three homes and in the past when this money was appropriated through CPA for out of target um, HR programs, we were able to do four units because it, it depends on how much work actually needs to be done. Really what we're doing is getting these buildings up to code and we're making them healthy, safe, um, um, dealing with lead issues if needed. Um, and so, so it could be three, it could end up being four depending on where the numbers play out. Um, and the administration is held, is done by PVPC, and there's a lot of administrative work that, that is through this program. You have to qualify, you have to make sure that the, the um, homeowners are qualified as low mod, in, mod income individuals. Um, so there's a lot of paperwork in there, and then there's a housing rehab specialist that goes out and does an inspection of the house and, and drives up the um, scope of work of what needs to be done in the, in the project. Um, and then they do the bidding out of PDPC's offices. They have an approved list of contractors. Uh, so they work with the homeowner. The homeowner then has an agreement with the contractor and is working directly And PDPC sort of is the um, entity that, that helps the homeowner working with the contractor. Is 
PVPC get the contract or does the homeowner get the contract? There's a bidding process, so okay. it's the lowest bidder, but if the homeowner wants to select another mm -hmm. Another contractor on that list, they have to pay the difference between what the low bid is and what the okay. next bid is. So they have to put their own money in. Okay. Um, the way that it's run is it's a um, it's a 15 year deferred payment loan, which means that whatever the amount of money is that they need to do the rehabilitation over a 15 year period, um, that loan is reduced by 150 every year. If the homeowner decides that they're going to sell the house before the 15 years is up, they need to pay that money back, and that money would go back into CPA. If they stay there the full 15 years, and the loan is forgiven, okay. and that's how the program works. Um, as I understand it, there's precedence for this kind of program in the CPA statewide. That's right. important. I wanted to tell you all, in the interest of transparency, that this was voted eight to one in favor by the CPA. One member felt that the language <coughs> 40 MGL 44B, which is the CPA Act. Um, concerning whether or not we, however, there's a line in here right after the bold section on this paper that I gave you that Jamie provided. However, that funds expended pursuant to this chapter shall not be used for maintenance. And he was concerned that the legality of the language, he is a lawyer, uh, prevented us from using funds like this. And the same will be said for the uh, uh, housing authorities uh, accommodation request for maintenance and we felt as Jamie explains in this email I provided to you that the language first of all and all of us felt the same way is fairly ambiguous as to whether or not this is allowed and we felt the housing where I highlighted housing authorities reasonable accommodations request and housing partnership rehab program can be reasonably justified and funder under preservation and support for community housing we felt that our interpretation, which we've learned, local CPA committees have a lot of autonomy, in a sense, in interpreting the law. And since there was precedence for this and it hasn't been challenged, we felt very comfortable, eight of us, in approving this. And secondly, um, the money is not being used frivolously. We are doing something that improves affordable housing in East Hampton. So I felt fairly comfortable in voting for it as well as eight other, uh, seven other members. But I wanted you to know what the minority person on it, and when we actually brought it up for a vote, he was kind of agreeing with us in a sense at that night when we voted on it at the, at the last meeting we voted on it. So he, he still voted no, but that's where he was. Mayor Ketcher. So um, I, if you don't mind, I would just like to, um, I put this forward, this appropriation request forward um, for funding to the city council because I have to say, in all the time I've been here, housing rehab is really, you know, one of the top, I think one of my top favorite things. It is a win-win for everybody. And I am really excited that this is out of the target area because the lines in the list of people that want this, and this is, this is, it prevents blight, it helps people that would not be able to do it. A lot of these things are up to code, they're health, they're structural. Mm -hmm. So this is a funding request that I wholeheartedly support and I hope that the, you know, the council will approve it. And I see no downside to it at all. Well, we didn't either, most of us. And uh, also that mention of the code, one of the things I liked about it was improving these homes that are eligible to get up to code. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Code is written because it's a safety issue for the most part. Mm -hmm. So we felt pretty good about it. And the criteria is really strict for these people to even be, you know, considered and eligible and then and then the list. So And the other question that came up with this and the housing <coughs> home buyer program is oversight. And the planner indicated in an email to all of us that uh, this had been done before and uh, the planning department would be responsible for seeing and monitoring the subcontractor filing financial paperwork, coordinating legal review, and other administrative duties. I think Jessica alluded to that. that it's very carefully monitored. It's not like we're handing mm -hmm. the city's mm -hmm. money to uh, managers outside of us uh, without oversight. Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions mm -hmm. on this before I go into the home buyers program? Um, you said there's precedence across the state. You said this has happened before. The precedence here, this has happened before here. Yes. We've done this. Yes, we oh, did. we've done it here, um, yeah. When I first started, so almost five years ago, it had already 
been appropriated and it was in the process. Um, in the under Stewart Beckler. Under Stewart, and it was, uh, in, yeah, it was four units is what ended up wrapping up. And that's also what sold, sold us on the it has been, it's also been happening at the state wide. It's not just here. So. <clears throat> just, um, just because I didn't quite understand what you said. Um, so the uh, the targeting the out, I mean, going toward an out of target area. Mm -hmm. Run that past me one more time. I should have brought the map. So, um, so I mean, the, I remember the map. You remember the map. So the target area is. Um, <clears throat> That's the community block grant That's the target community area. block grant target area, and we're only allowed to spend CDBG funding within that target area. Okay. Um, these houses are outside the target area. That's what we're trying to focus on is, is folks that have called us and said, we need assistance, we'd like to be put on the list, and we say, we'll put you on the list because we may, we may be going for CPA funds to, to do out of target, but you're not actually eligible for CDBG funding because your house isn't in the right location. Thus the whole question of CPA funds versus CDBG right funds. so the focus is to is to got it yeah okay same concept just different funding pool exactly exactly, okay. exactly. and and we have a very long standing relationship with PBPC they've been running our housing rehab program for years so we have a very you know they know the drill we've got the drill down it's it, it runs perfect. It, it runs, runs perfected. It runs. It's <laughs> definitely perfected. And then a lot of these, as they as they they're paid up, the liens are released, and they yeah, come to right. you know they come to me to sign off on, and then they're recorded. Or once in a while, people sell a little before that, mm -hmm. and um, you know so is there, I I have never seen an issue with these most in all the years we've been doing them. Yeah, and most <coughs> of the individuals that take advantage of this are elderly. We yep. have a lot of elderly clients, um, people who want to stay in their homes but just mm -hmm. need some. A little bit of help to, to bring it up to the code that they need to be. And it is income eligible too, but it, it just means that they're not in that specific area, so, you yeah. know, for CDBG. But it still is income related. And do they pay back? Do they only if, pay if they sell it? Only if they sell it. She was telling you about the 15 yeah. years. But That's, there's no actual money changing hands. It just de If they sell it, there is. Right. But, but they if sell they it don't, within seven uh, years. every year it goes down a certain right. percentage Correct. until right. after 15 years. Right. It's, it's gone. So if they sell in year seven, do they pay yes. eight years? Or do they pay all 15 years? No. No, no they pay the, the amount of years remaining on the loan. Okay. Yeah. It depreciates every year yeah. for 15 One years. 15. After 15 yeah. years, it's gone. But if you sell it in seven years, then you pay the remaining balance that you would owe on it. <clears throat> Got it. Okay. Um, so the first time home buyer program, who wants to talk about that? Do you want to talk about that, Kathy? This is also something that was voted on. This was voted on 9 to 0 because the language on your thing, the bottom, section two, completely supports this program for CPA, so nobody had an objection to it. It's voted unanimously. Go ahead, Kathy. Uh, the design for this program um, is well known throughout the state. It's, it's done by a number of nonprofit agencies. Um, the one nearest to us is the Valley Community Development Corporation in Northampton. And um, so we wanted to bring this program and into this campaign. So the, it's a similar concept where um, a deferred payment loan is given to eligible first-time home buyers to assist them with down payment and closing costs. Um, the buyers are required to receive education about being a first-time home buyer, and there, there's also an income eligibility criteria. It's slightly different than the other one, but it still exists. And um, the mortgage products, most of the banks or the whatever mortgage products are offered to first-time home buyers have a requirement that a certain amount of their the buyer's own money goes into the down payment and closing costs. So this is like gap funding. This is funding for people who meet income guidelines and have never been able to save the amount of money that's needed to buy a home uh, for those particular costs. They can meet the mortgage payments, but they can't get that initial piece of money. Um, so this <coughs> the budget proposes that six buyers um, receive down payment assistance, down payment and closing cost assistance. Um, they're required to participate in the counseling and education program that would be offered by the vendor. And there's also a line item uh, for some lead testing if that's a requirement, lead testing in the and then an, uh, an item for administrative costs of the support vendor. Um, just the 
basic rent to the town is that So, so the total amount uh, of the request for that program is seventy five thousand dollars. The council, excuse me, the counseling and education. It says forty five participants. Oh yes, um, <coughs> there are always many more people that are interested in buying a home that can um, can actually <coughs> buy a home and. The counseling and education program, for example, that Valley CDC runs is an ongoing program year, year round. Uh, just about every month they hold a first time home buyer workshop. Uh, very often the banks sponsor or underwrite that, so their workshops are held in the community room in, in the local banks. Um, and one of the, um, the things that I like best about this counseling is that um, sometimes people find out that they're really not in a good position right now to buy a home, and that's really important that they understand that and also understand the steps that they need to take in order to make that happen. So it's a broadly based program, and it's not geared just to six people who would. So, the, so we basically fund the teachers for yes. it, and up to 45 people can attend. That's correct. There was a thought that some of the lawyers and bankers involved in real estate would volunteer for this. It's in their best interest if they can get some of these home buyers to consider. They don't do it because they want to uh, advertise their own work, but they feel that they've had, I guess they've had success in getting volunteers, so we don't have to pay that directly. And again, I wholeheartedly support this. Valley CDC uses our upstairs area for these classes. These classes are, to me, the knowledge that people pick up. And, and there are, I, I, I know personally, of people that have not only benefited from the classes, but are actually able to buy their first home through this. And again, the criteria is really strict, but the education is phenomenal. And we are thrilled to let Valley CDC use our upstairs for these. And if, when you see the people coming in for these meetings on a monthly basis, it's, it's very exciting. So again, the, the, you know, there's criteria, it's based on your income, but it allows people to get the down payment for their home, but not only that, to get the education to know <coughs> if you can afford it. And Great we, program. We asked for, this budget I think was developed from the Valley CDC, the budget you see here, so it has some basis in uh, precedence. Um, and a vendor would be <coughs> contracted for this to administer this RFP would go out from your office uh, once this is approved. We would find a vendor who would, who would act for it. Again, we still have oversight. We don't hand it to them. No. I'm not it, yeah, I was just going to say, <laughs> so are you aware of our planning department? <laughs> yeah, it's all no, really? All this I is over think so. All of this is overseen in the planning department, and, and, and the reporting of these are well, very when they cumbersome when, when you sent me this email that said that the planning department would be overseeing i said oh well, that's okay yep. now we're not worried because i and know not, and, you, and, they're, and they're not new right they're not new these are programs that we've had yeah, for, it, it we've is had in the past for many we, years. we had the before my time uh -huh. under cdbg we we ran a first time home buyer mm -hmm. program so we have a we know what the process is for the monitoring Susan Pena, who's in my office, who's the CDBG coordinator, she pulled out all the first time home buyer files. We're going back and looking at, at the process and how it works. So um, so I have support staff who, who has managed this program in the past, and um, you know, I, I think it'll be fine. It's not, it's not too complicated. It's just making sure all the paperwork is getting submitted and monitored. So. And the CPA committee unanimously supported this. So. so again, my question is, was this formally under CDBG and now we're asking for it in the CPA funds? It's it's a hard program to fund under CDBG because of the grant process and how the points are distributed and how <coughs> the types of projects that um, Department of um, Housing and Community Development want to see CDBG projects mm -hmm. for. Um, social services is kind of, a, is it's funded but it's tough. Um, so in, in the last time we did it was when the economy tanked. And so it was kind. Of, it was very hard for folks to meet that low mod criteria mm -hmm. and find a house and be credit worthy. Mm -hmm. So it's you know it's a very select <coughs> group of individuals that can really qualify for this program because they still need to meet the income qualification, but they still have to be credit worthy too. And so um, 
So that was the last time we actually managed it was, was during the housing crash. Okay. And refresh my memory, how do they repay? So oh, five-year. Five-year yeah. repayment? Yes. yes. But it's not a deferred one. Like it the, is. It's the it same. Is. It's a deferred payment loan for five years instead of 15. So we are actually giving them the money after five years. Yes. So we're, what we're trying to prevent is anybody flipping, basically. So flipping a home. Flipping right. a home. That's, that's right. why. That's right. why the DPLs are in place. So you don't want somebody to take the money and then sell it next year. Mm -hmm. So. Um, and is the 45 divided equally among the six, or is it kind of somebody needs five, somebody else needs nine, or is it probably kind of that depends. kind of thing? It's yeah. individual. Yes. Okay. And last question. I think maybe. Jimmy, are in this email where they ha where you've got section two definitions down here? Yes. Is Can that relevant them? to the first time home buyer? Yeah. So that was um, from the master of laws explaining what um, CPA, CPA, CPA for. money can be used for and how the committee and the planning department feel that this can be. Justified under, and it meets the requirements and it can be uh, funded. Okay. With, with okay. <coughs> That's less ambiguous than the other, in my opinion. That's pretty straightforward. All right. All right. Well, since although this is two programs, it is a single supplemental appropriation request, so I'm just going to ask for a motion to approve the entire 192 500. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Finance Committee unanimous support. Uh, I might ask if, because you're so knowledgeable in this, that both of you attend the council meeting. Sure. It is a large amount of money. We might get questions. Sure. And that's this Wednesday at 6:15. Okay. Thank you. Next Wednesday. Today is Wednesday. So next. Oh, next. A week okay. today. All right. In 45 minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got children to feed. I can't. <laughs> You've got a house to buy or something. House is bought. House is bought. House okay. to move. House to move. Thank you very much for your time. Thank okay, you. we'll try to Thank keep you your Jessica. taxes down I'll over see you there. Yes. Okay. Good luck. Thank Good luck. Thanks. Um, the next item I want to do is the um, other. I want to get the other CPA stuff out of the way. So let's try the twenty thousand eight hundred CPA funds from improvements to Mutter Field. John. John. No. <laughs> Marty. Marty Klein. Marty. I got you guys mixed up because I don't see you. I hope not. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, why don't you explain it? No, this was approved. I'd be honored if you thought it was. Nine to zero by the, uh, <clears throat> has to do, in the projects, uh, he has a budget in the back. CPA felt it was good. We did cut the autistic sculpture they wanted, but, so we didn't just blanket everything. We did cut something in the whole thing. These are pictures, I don't know if you saw them, of the rail, the trail yep. that he uh, is going to talk about. Go for it, Marty. Um, this uh, particular request uh, is for three things um, at, the, at the new accessible trail that the Pest Common Conservation Trust has built um, between East Street and East Green Street, on a parcel that we own. And the three things in this request are um, we, we wanted to build a connector between the loop trail that we have around the meadow and our existing Brickyard Brook Trail goes behind Mountain View Farm. And that trail's been in existence for uh, over 10 years now. <coughs> it's, it's our most heavily used trail. Um, and we thought it would be great to connect the two, even though the Brickyard Brook existing trail, the old one, um, is not accessible. So what we've done is we've made probably a, I don't know, 30-foot continuation of the um, um, loop trail that goes into the woods where we have had a uh, memorial bench and a, um, I guess a I rock that also commemorates people. Is well, no, no, but that's, I'll explain that next. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so now we have a nice sitting area and sort of a, um, overlook over the brook there, and um, we're adding an accessible bench to go in there that the trust is paying out of its funds, and um, it's really a Do nice spot anybody? so that people have a chance to get I out of the, the field and into Sorry. the forest. Is, this a, what are, are, um, is any of these representative? No, of because probably at the time I put the request in, it wasn't. Okay. It wasn't started. 
so um, yeah, they're I'm from the original request. I'm going to get to those next. Okay. <laughs> so that was that was one component. The second one is um, uh, one of the uh, parts of the trust mission is educational, and so um, I'm ordering uh, five interpretive signs from a company in Illinois that makes beautiful colored um, signs. They have a 10-year warranty um, for parks and trails, and um, these signs are going to be placed at different points around the trail and are going to explain various things to people, such as uh, one's going to be about Mount Tom because we have a great view of the mountain from there. Another's going to be about um, pollinators, what role they play in nature. Invasive plants is another one. Um, uh, there's a couple more I can't think of offhand right now. But, um, and so those will be uh, in our hands by the end of the year. They take a while because they're custom made. And it's a couple of How months. Big How big are they? They're, um, let's see, 20 by 20. And the biggest one, of course, with the invasive plants is uh, 24 by 36. So it's and who nice. installs them once they arrive? We will. Okay. Yeah. Could you touch on? There is money also being provided by your committee, by this trust. I mean, for the for, signs. For yeah. All of this. Oh, for yeah. We're, right. We contribute. This isn't the just CPA funded. Just so. No, CPA is definitely total matching fund, sixty-seven thousand. Right, and we we've had actually more than that. We got forty-seven thousand from uh, the Commonwealth um, of Massachusetts DCR Recreational Trails Program. That was our first grant, and we've had, I, I haven't had a recent total, but around, probably approaching 20,000 in individual donations, and we expect more will come in. And we're trying to establish a, um, a maintenance endowment so that we can uh, have some money to take care of the trail over time. Um, and the, the third component um, of this request is butterfly gardens. So we hired a couple of um, stone workers from Ashfield, and they came in and built these the kind of rectangular with round corners, um, two feet high. And we have um, a local woman who's a horticultural wizard who has donated the plants. And because it's been so dry, we have held off on planting them. But um, by the end of the month, we're going to put soil in there, and we're going to plant them with native flowering plants that she's already purchased and has been taken care of all summer in the ground. So um, we wanted to do that because the, the meadow there is just loaded with invasive plants, and we are going to be rehabbing that over the next few years, bringing it back after we kill some things off um, to, to what it might have looked like if all these nasty plants had gotten in there. But we wanted to give people an idea of some beautiful native flowering plants that they might have seen, um, but can't see right now. Okay. So um, it's going to be one more thing along the trail that will, will give people something uh, to look at and experience um, in other sensual ways. So and this if you haven't been to the trail yet, it's getting rave reviews, and you really need to come. We're having a grand opening on October 8th. Just You're all that. getting invitations. That's the whole accessible trail? Yeah. But this isn't started yet, has it? Or it hasn't started? What's that? This this part of it, the accessible the trail, the additional funding. Have you started it and this is going to... Every All the work is done now. Oh, so this is going to be... The only thing out. that we haven't done okay. is fill up the planters and plant them, because they're built, and um, the signs. So this funds well. pay, pays you back or pay... I forget. Yeah, we get reimbursed. This right? is a we reimbursement of funding invoices to the city. I got it. You've okay. already spent the money. Yeah, that's correct, yeah. right? So we we paid. Yeah, but well, they have to submit bills to you to yes, get this yes. funding. They it's reimbursable. Right. So the first, the first hundred eighty-five thousand from the CPA. Um, so Previous talk? CPA funding is in April. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Good. So that. Um, I think we're all done with it. Yeah. That. That's there's. Uh, some money left on un invoiced, but it's all been they they spend it, they submit their invoices, and we reimburse them. Okay. Good. Uh, any questions? This this uh, is qualifies under open space and preservation. So mm -hmm. we loved it. Uh, and and I sure. Also, yes. I just wanted to add a word. My name's Ann Alston. Okay. I live actually on Mother Street. Okay. But um, I've been. Uh, working on doing some volunteer work for, for
towards getting the trail going. And I go there a lot and just want to say in terms of community support, I, interestingly over the past couple months as it gets finished, I've seen, whenever I go, there's like a lot of parents with strollers, mm -hmm. which is interesting to me. I mean, in, uh, yes, people could go on the bike path, but this is so nice because there's, you, you can't have bikes and rolling things on it. Um, mm -hmm. Toddlers can get out and run. You can do your stroller, you know, you s two people together, which on the bike path, you always gotta move over and stuff. So it's, re I think it, just from observation, it's getting great use and really good community support. So the fact that you're putting um, community preservation money into it, I think will be really appreciated by everyone. And also just say in terms, of I've done some fundraising on my own and some of our local churches have contributed because I think especially for the disabled Mm -hmm. um, opportunity that's there. So in so Accessible, many ways, that's it's a the big word. Yeah. That's awesome. That's it's scenic. awesome. It's exactly what the CPA was designed to do. And I love these kinds of projects because it's so, it's not so, it, it's not that active recreation like football. It's passive recreation. It's, it's used by a broad spectrum of people, especially now. Uh, accessible, being accessible to handicapped people is great. It's just fantastic. The, um, the sort of subtitle I, I created for this project is A Place in Nature for Everyone. Nice. Um, That's a nice and, thing. Nice. And so um, we, we built it specifically so that people who do have handicaps would be able to get out in nature in a safe environment where they wouldn't have to worry about bicycles <coughs> and whatever behind them. Um, and it's it's actually turned out to serve a lot more than that, and the, the people in the surrounding neighborhoods are thrilled about it, have been using it since December. Um, we have, we've installed a couple of picnic tables there. We have a, a rain shelter. It's really a beautiful place. Are dogs allowed? Dogs are allowed on leash, um, and if you have a plastic bag. <laughs> there, was, there was a time, it was about a couple months ago, and I was leading a tour for um, uh, some people, they came from Michigan, and they're touring accessible trails around the country with a handicapped son. Ooh, and so wow. I gave him a tour of the trail, and in the course of the going around it, I had to pick up six piles that's of dog terrible. crap uh, oh, on the trail. Terrible. So I took a photograph of one of that those. That might be one yeah, of your signs. On and I posted it, I put yeah. up signs, but I also posted it on Facebook with like, are you kidding me? <laughs> is, there any, is there any benefit to putting in a pole with You know, we thought dog about bags? it. I, I don't want to, that angle to get the idea of a dog it? park, it's right. not. Yeah. yeah, that's true. And so, miraculously, whether it had to do with my Facebook postings or not, I haven't had that problem. We haven't had that problem since. It's Facebook does some good for you. And um, I'm in the process now of raising awareness, and I put a po post on Facebook last week, and I think I had, geez, last time I looked, I don't know, 140 likes and 20 shares, which, if you're not on Facebook, we're reaching hundreds of people that way that yeah. wouldn't have known about it otherwise. How so. did this, is that how, how, I'm wondering how the woman with her son found out about you, about, well, about the trail. She yeah. actually works for the a National Land Trust Organization, and there was a, I guess there was a posting on their email server or something that somebody passed along to me, and I wrote to her and I said, hey, you're out this way. That's wonderful. That's yeah. wonderful, hey. thank you. Oh, thank you. We're so grateful that you've supported us in this way because um, it was an expensive project and two hundred five thousand out of a little, little volunteer organization. Yeah, so that's great. this really made it made the difference. Just to let you know, you're no little organization. <laughs> well, <laughs> you guys are everywhere. <laughs> well, our impact is is um, yeah. big, but our you know in terms of numbers. And I want to know the names of those flowers after. <laughs> oh yeah, Leslie. We'll have a Any more questions, counselors? I'll take a motion. Motion to uh, approve the allocation of $20,800 $20, to uh, Waterfield Water Repairs Field. Work Accessible Trail. What he said. Second. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Well, now I there? find it. There it is. Okay. 
Thank you. Thank and you. And again, this Wednesday, if you want to come in case there's questions. I'm going to be out of town, Dan. Do you want me to write a letter to the council? How about John? Is there? Uh, John's going to be there as well as some other people from the no, trust. You don't, need, oh, to, you don't need to be here. As yep. long as somebody from the trust is there. Okay. In I case there's questions. But this one is pretty... Uh, I know. I think it's... it's, yeah. it, it, it's We've already approved 185,000. It's not like this is, is new, so I'm not worried about it. No, not either. Just if you if you can have someone there in case. We'll, okay. we'll have some numbers here. All right. From our small organization. <laughs> the last Thank one. Thank you. On the CPA, is the forty thousand dollars for another accessibility request, and this had to do. Well, if you remember, we put forward. Um, the fire suppressions from the Housing Authority mm -hmm. and at the time she mentioned she wishes she could do ramps and things because they have been buying them and he says why not and as Jamie has indicated in the same way we felt this isn't maintenance this is preservation of housing and affordable housing so I'm going to give you a couple of pictures these were in the mail these are the kind of ramps they've done on their own before Tim Kane is the maintenance supervisor there Deb is having surgery or something, can't yeah, be here tonight. And he can he could explain. These are, I can I hand you, uh, this, t and a lot of the, this is all the application stuff. And some of the, you can see some of the funding. These are, they've had to buy them in the past. So they've had to use their own funding. And this will uh, assist them greatly. They actually only asked for 30. We upped it to 40 so they can get a lot of the ramps done. And where CPA. are these going to be? Yeah, which, where are they? Can you? What, what, it, what it boils down to is if, if a resident that's lived there, say, a year or a month or a week, um, suddenly decides it's hard for me to get in and out of my, my apartment, Mass State Law considers that a reasonable accommodation if they get a doctor's note. And they bring that reasonable accommodation to us, and we have to alleviate the, the barrier. That so this is place. anywhere. This isn't a particular exactly. housing um, facility. These, it's, and it's not just ramps in general, but ramps is the biggest thing. This is... Um, There's also shower... Rolling shower, uh, shower units. Um, um, it wouldn't go so far as to like actually remodeling a, a unit for full accessibility because that's beyond the scope. That would be beyond a reasonable accommodation. But basically, it's just the... The removal of barriers to allow the residents to live a regular life. Mm -hmm. is and okay. it's just to answer your question more clearly, it's any house that's under your authority. Correct. Um, these because particular these are, ramps, the six thousand, five thousand dollar ramps, are actually at Cliff View and uh, Sunrise, which okay. is a single story building, um, or a single step in mm -hmm. building is what they call it. If we were to put one of these over at Glad Acres, those ramps would run anywhere from 14 to 16 on up because they have to travel at a certain pitch for a certain distance of time. After you get across a certain amount of distance, there has to be a rest period. So, so you have to have a landing. A, a level point and then continue on with your mathematics as to how long the ramp has to be. So these might, if you had to put some in over there, you'd only do three over there. It's $40,000. That's, that's it. Are these removable? These that we're looking those at Those particular ones are removable. Um, some of the ones that we've done in an, eff in an effort to save money um, is brought in a concrete company and just poured a solid concrete ramp. Um, the problem with those is, is they become a maintenance issue after that. So that's why we kind of stick to these. Cause and you can remove these winter. and move them, move them. If someone doesn't need it in the right. future, you can we move can, them to we another have, house. We have storage space that we can utilize. The nice thing is these all break down. Mm -hmm. They're just set screws, they break down. You can set them together. You can store them up in the rafters of, of the sheds if you had to. Yeah. I like these, but you have to do what you have to do. Um, I should again tell you that um, one of the same member felt that uh, this was maintenance. I didn't feel it was maintenance because these are new I can, items. I can assist you with clarifying that, actually. Well, <laughs> you, you don't have to because this is about interpretation of the CPA law, and eight of the members. Again, it's the same issue as it was for the rehab program. Is this maintenance of affordable housing or is this preservation of affordable housing? So it was the same uh, person who felt that it wasn't, but we all felt that our interpretation and the precedence for doing this um, 
Go ahead. CK funded um, ramp improvements at the Housing Authority, I think it was 2008, and then again in 2010. So this um, has been done before, right? So there's a wooden, there's a wooden ramp um, going into... Oh, okay. The, uh, the new ramp at Cliff Hughes Community Room was right. paid for. Right. That was 14. And, and the right, and then there was also the, the, the bathroom, bathroom, the accessible bathroom. The, yep. bathroom, the bathroom at the same time. Was the ramp. Yep, so at the community room. Yep. Okay. So just at so Cliffview. The, the CPA has, a fund, has funded mm -hmm. accessibility of improvements at the Housing Authority mm -hmm. multiple times. Um, okay. And again, this has to do with mm -hmm. accommodation, reasonable accommodation, which we felt, geez, that's important mm -hmm. uh, for people who have to live in these homes because of their affordability and don't have the money to improve the home to a ramps, et cetera, so. And you know, you're looking at these pictures. I love the way that, I love that these are removable, but you're looking at one step, one step right. can prevent you from living in your own place. That's and that's step. sad, one of them it's very like, sad. It was just like this tall yeah. Yeah. on one yeah. of these pictures. Yep. Once you, you know, once you experience that, it's a matter of, you know, not living in your own home anymore. Mm -hmm. So question, um, this packet that we got, I sent her what you sent me today. I'm trying to, I, would this have come from you, or Tim, right? Correct. It came it's from the housing. I wrote up that. One, one is for 30,000, but I don't see that another 10,000. Uh, we, that was done at the. CPA, as I said, increased it to 40. It was our choice. They requested okay. 30, and we just said, that's not enough. Because, as she explained, no, to be honest with you, we felt, we felt that there wasn't enough money to afford, considering some of the ramps cost so $15,000. $15, so this is payback. 30000 you've already spent. No. No. Um, this is for, this would go into a holding point. Okay. And it's for future. as we needed a, a reasonable Pull accommodation comes up, we submit it and... So it'd be, it would be run on a... It would be run. The, the the money would stay in an account in the city's one of the city's accounts um, when the housing authority comes to uh, either me or the CPA committee or Jessica with the request. The reasonable accommodation is, is going to cost ten thousand dollars on these are the bids that we've received. Then we'll pay the con we'll pay the contractor directly or we'll reimburse the housing authority depending on um, whatever we determined at that point. It okay. won't have to be a ramp. Any request to comply with ADA? Um, yeah, there was a shower install thing. Right. Shower and install. But it has to be a reasonable accommodation. So there right. was, and, there it, and that's a definition. There's a definition. Yeah, it, goes, definition. it goes right. all the way through. We've, they've got to have doctor's notes. They've got to have... Um, right. I mean, we've done reasonable accommodations as far as even allowing a woman who has difficulty breathing, allow her to run her air conditioner in the wintertime. That's a reasonable accommodation. They just bring you a note, and we continue to pay the electric bill. That's, I mean, that's the way those are. Okay. But we would never come to you for paying our electric bill. I'm just right. saying. Right. <laughs> these are for these are for getting the bathroom or shower. Yeah, but yeah. this this allows them to use these funds mm -hmm. rather than their own funds to do these ramps. And the reason we did extend it, we debated it at length, was because the cost of these ramps is pretty high. Is. He mentioned if he had to do. Uh, a couple of steps over there that's 15 16 grand yeah I mean you only get two of them done at, at 30 so we felt we ought to try and give them enough funding to do at least a few at the beginning if they're only 5,000 that's only those one step ramps you saw pictures of yeah. but you're looking at other housing areas where you need to do larger ramps right yeah. so there and wasn't a frivolous way. reason, it was just... Oh, no way. And, <laughs> and the guidelines on these ramps are really stringent through, um, through the building inspector's office because of the grade. They have to be, you know, obviously up to code for a certain grade for obvious reasons, and like you said, like a resting area, so yeah, they're pretty strict. They say what size bolts they can use to hold it down for right. weight distribution. Oh, it's, they, you can't just put one of these up without knowing what you're doing. Okay, good. Thank you. Any other questions? No. Question, Dan? No. Take a motion. Motion to appropriate $40,000 from the uh, from the CPA to the Housing Authority for reasonable accommodation accessibility. Second. Discussion. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Dan, is Thank that you Wednesday, too? 
Yes, all of the are things on our agenda you are to, Wednesday. Will you be able to be there or somebody yeah, from? Or I, depending on how fast right. or, uh, I don't expect, again, to have any issue with this. It is about accessibility and accommodation, but it's good to have somebody there. Good to have somebody there. So. Okay? All right. At 615. Thank, 615. Thank, 615. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to... Oh, well, we can do the $8,543 item. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you. See you tomorrow night. Um, I want to explain the reserve fund fire medical right. expense uh, from Chief Motter. So I'd, ahead, be, I'd be happy to explain this. This is just a typical old bill. Um, invoices that come in after the fact. Our fiscal year closes June 30th. Um, we are really very progressive about calling to see if there are any invoices that are out there so because we cannot use fiscal 17 money to pay fiscal 16 expenses but no matter how you know how much you reach out to any of your vendors and you're waiting for things to come in they still come in later on and this was something that they thought was uh, not going to be done and you know one of the things was done the very end of June so they thought it was going to be done in July which would have been next year's funds so that's what these are so you cannot we can't process these without, uh, that's exactly how we process them as an old bill. You need to ask us for the funding because it has to be a supplemental Because it's last year's. Transfer. Right. We can't pay anything out of you this year's You can use reserve money. fund, but you can't use existing We can't pay money. anything out of this year's money mm -hmm. with that was last year's bill. So that's why we call, it's nicknamed an old bill because that's what it is. So we need a transfer um, and you'll notice but it's from the reserve fund, which is this year's money. I'm not, I'm not understanding that. Okay, so we use the reserve fund as our source of revenue mm -hmm. to fund these. So if this was, if these bills, all these these medical bills, vehicle repairs, happened in July, we just pay them out of the fire budget. Right. We can't because they happened in, in June. June. So we have to use, you know, whatever reserve fund is what we chose to use here. Um, we could use stabilization, but why would we? But you're so using funding that hasn't been previously appropriated in fiscal 17, if I understand this correctly, right. for specific fire department expenses. In other words, you have to it find either reserve fund, free cash, or stabilization to pay these bills because they haven't been appropriated. No, that, that's, that's not actually the way it is. I could pay, we could pay these, it doesn't matter, we could pay them, we could pay them out of our budget because you don't approve every single thing in the fiscal 17 budget. We have line, right, like he right. has a vehicle, he has a vehicle repair line item in his 17 budget, right. but this isn't 17 money. We cannot use 17 money to pay 16 expenses. It's last year's expense. So that's why it's called an old bill because it is. It's not this year's bill. I it's last year's bill. That, so we have to put the like we have to put the money into that, um, into that a separate, a, you know, so separate. Money, one. So mm -hmm. into the reserve fund, does money go that was quote unquote left over from 2016? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. so, the the books close on mm -hmm. whatever day the books close, June 30th. Mm -hmm. Every dollar is accounted for. Is there money that ends up in like a savings account, and then that well, that's what our that's what our that's what our like like is free cash becomes, and re reserve is what we make it. That's part of our budgeted. We we budget a reserve, but anything as you know, anything not used in sixteen floats into free cash for seventeen, which will be happening pretty soon. You'll see free cash certification. But we cannot pay for any invoice that we get in July or August, September, October. If that invoice, if that data service was in May or June, which is our last fiscal year, we cannot pay it out of this year's money. We have the money. He has the money in his line items, but he can't pay it because it's last year's. But yet we can it occurred pay it last out of year. the reserve fund. We, we're, not, we're not paying it out of the reserve fund. We're transferring money from the reserve fund into, which is into these line items which is for to pay an old bill that the, the explanation then is that the reserve fund can be used to be transferred into the line item. exactly even though that reserve fund was budgeted out of FY 17 funding the reserve fund can be used because it it's right. not dedicated to any department right. it's there in reserve like right. stabilization right. for these items that's what I meant right. yeah okay yeah. I got it and you could, could you have used free cash or we don't have free cash yet 
But if you had it, you could. You could. Oh, yeah. If like say if this it was is, already moved, say this yeah. was October and yeah. we have our free cash certified, then we could move money from free cash to pay this. I could. We could. So this use, is an accounting. I could, really. Exactly. I could use stabilization money to pay this, but it becomes a transfer no matter what way you look at it. Uh, this was like, unbudgeted for FY17. It was budgeted for FY16, so to speak. It's an expense in 16. Mm -hmm. An expense in a, a prior year's expense, whether mm -hmm. it's 16, 15, 14, cannot be paid out of this year's money. Got it. Got it. Okay. Good. Any other questions, guys? Uh, no. The same straightforward. Yep. I'll take a motion. Dan, you're up. All right. And we motion to for the following appropriation to move $8,541.21 from the reserve fund into two accounts, $1,837.86 into fire medical expenses, $6,705.35 to fire vehicle repairs for a total of $8,541.43.21. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay, thank you. Um, Dan, you're up for your reserve. The, for your we don't have a date on that yet, right, Dan? Is this one? I put Are you going to do them all? Okay. I don't mess around. I don't want to see <laughs> old dates wanna... by my agenda <laughs> items. <laughs> you want to see my agenda items? <laughs> well, it, it, we haven't had any work to do for two months, so I don't think the oh, counselors mind no, getting some no work. No shortage. To, yeah. <laughs> well, then there'll be holdups. But I figure these are fairly straightforward, mm -hmm. so we could get them. Do you want to explain a workman's comp, dear? Um, we had, at the time of the budget, we had received an estimate of a 25% increase in workers comp. 25%? What's the reason for that? Too many people have applied for workman's comp? Is that why? Rates of insurance rates in general have Gone up. skyrocketed. And because there's more risk now. Well, every year when we prepare our budgets, we ask our insurance companies, whether it's liability or workers' comp, you know, do we need to plan on an increase? Whether it's health insurance, liability, workers' comp, do we need to plan on an increase? And um, a lot of times it's yes. We love it when it's, when no. it's flat. <laughs> but um, in, on this particular case with workers' comp, it goes by your usage. What's your in risk. there now, Jane? I'm sorry? What's in there now in, in the workers' comp budget? You said there's a deficit in that account. Well, you can see what you, what's in the budget and what you need. So um, she, this is what she's short, is the 12750 But is that going to double it? No. No. It's, just, no, it's, it's like 167, almost 168000 so, in other words, you got an invoice and you didn't have enough to pay it. Exactly. Right. She's twelve seven fifty short. Okay. That's why we have a reserve fund. Okay. So, so one sixty eight was budget. Correct. And it came in at one eighty and change. Whatever your invoice okay. is, Jane. It came in. Oh, excuse me. The 168 includes the 111F, so the police and fire public safety. So the budgeted for workers' comp is approximately. Well, it's your whole bottom. No, because that's what that's 111F. You've got that in here. So it's 168, and the bill is 14567 for workers' comp and. 39953 for 111F. So it's a combination of insurance mm -hmm. and Correct. needs that you Public have Public safety have their own policy. Okay. So it's not, not just one policy, but it's workers' comp. Correct. Two policies. Okay. Yes. Got you. Okay. Good. Any questions, Dan? Nope. Motion. Who's up for a motion? A motion to transfer from the reserve fund for uh, a deficit in workers' compensation of $12,750 to be transferred to workers' compensation and 111F fund, uh, I said $12,750. All in favor? Aye. Everybody opposed? Thank you. Thank you, guys. We're done with all of our things. The last thing I got to do is this 
clerical need to actually approve the ordinance change, which we already approved the funding for the clerk's salary. Now we have to approve the ordinance. This is just we being... We have to approve it? Yeah. We've, the ordinance if you doesn't approve it? Remember the pay plan? You may have done this. Pay plan has two things associated with it. One is the financial aspects of the pay plan. Uh -huh. The other is the ordinance, which uh, approves the change in the pay plan. Okay. This is similar Thank to you that. Very Thank much. You. So okay. it's typically sent to the same committee. So you know, the charter says a committee of the council must approve an ordinance. It doesn't necessarily have to be the ordinance committee. And because this was just like the pay plan, we always send both of those items to finance, finance because they're associated so okay. directly. Yep. So in other words, this should have been yeah. with us when we got, got this. It. And I didn't even know that there was an ordinance associated because we hadn't given her a raise in a long time. So. Okay. Uh, it's and really just... This is for Barbara? It's just to make sure that everything is up to snuff with regard to following through on the salary. So right. I'll take a motion to approve. Motion to approve the amendment... Uh, seven five, section this, 7 This five. is Chapter 7, Section 7 5, the Clerk to City Council salary. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thank you. So that's everything, I think. Is there anything else you guys want to say? Oh, yeah. Okay. Full Thanks, hour. Is that 7 o'clock? Thanks. Okay. Good. We approve Motion these. to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Thank you for everything. Hit the button. Oh, thank you. Thank you for reminding me. Thank you, Melissa.